Okay, so I just want to show you now uh, how we can use pHstat uh, to do the t-test and also the z-test for the proportion. So when we do the t-test, we will also use some data uh, set uh, coming with our book, which is the GRAT survey data. Okay, so let's just switch again to Excel now. All right, and we can open here uh, some of our latest uh, Excel sheets. So grad survey, we, we are familiar with this. This is the clear mountain case, which we see in every chapter of the book. So I want to just do some t-tests with some, of course, we need some numerical variables here. And uh, here, let's take, uh, I just want to take here uh, the UG GPA, undergraduate GPA. Okay, so there are 45, there are 44, 44 people in the survey. So N is equal to 44. Okay, so now let's just do, okay, so this is G, G2. Okay, G2, two, let me see that, to G45. Okay, G2 to G45. And the average is, you can read it here, it's 3.4. Okay, so maybe we can construct the hypothesis test. So to, to see if the average of the undergraduate is greater than 3.25 or equal to, or maybe 3.5. Okay, so we can, test these alternatives. So let's just start again, uh, pH stat, one sample test, T test for the mean, sigma is unknown. So what is the null hypothesis? Let me just check first if the undergraduate GPA of these students is equal to 3.5. Now, since we always use 0 0.05, let's now use this time 0.01. Now, I don't know these yet, so I'll want Excel to calculate these and I'll give uh, a range. So G2 to G45. Now, if I, if I say G1 to G45, I can actually do uh, the first cell contains label, but now I'm going to omit that, okay? So I'm going to also do, just choose the standard two tail test. So now the value in the sample is very close. 3.4, I think, is the average. So let's see what the hypothesis test gives us for the average undergraduate GPA being equal to 3.5. So let's do that. Okay. So, all right, the mean is equal to 3.5. Level of significance, sample mean is 336. Standard deviation calculated. And you can see the formula here. And this refers to something in the other sheet. Okay. A sheet name is data, and you have the exclamation there, and then you have the uh, you have the uh, name of the array. Sample mean, same way. Okay, and this is of course our sample size. It's forty-four found by the count function. So this gives us the degrees of freedom, which is number of uh, elements minus one. Standard error calculated in the same way. And the t-test statistic difference between hypothetical mean and the sample mean, of course, sample mean comes first. So it's minus 2.73. Uh, 2 okay. Uh, of course, it's divided by the standard error too. So the difference actually is 0. 0 0.14, but that's divided by 0 0.04. So this is the T statistic. So likely it's gonna be a rejection because the critical value T inverse two tail, taking the alpha level, okay? Taking degrees of freedom from here, upper critical value, okay? So you see just for the lower critical value, it puts a minus sign. And for the P value, you use the T dist, 2t function and just the absolute value. 2t is two tail, of course, stands for two tail. And the conclusion uh, reject the null hypothesis. So it's likely that the undergraduate GPA of all the students is not equal to 
3.5 with this sample. So this was a demonstration again of uh, how we would use the pH stat for, uh, for the t-test. So let's do just one final example, uh, which is covered again in our discussion of hypothesis tests, one sample hypothesis test, the last kind of test of the sort, the z-test for the proportion. So let's do again the example given in our slides where the company claims to receive an 8% response from sending a catalog and we use level of significance of 005 and we have 500, a sample of 500, okay, sorry, we have the sample size here, but we received 25 responses from the sample and we constructed a two-tailed test, but we could try all the different versions, of course. So let's try the two, uh, one two-tailed first. Similarly, we get the reject conclusion, okay? So we have the sample proportion here, standard error. This is calculated with hypo hypothesized value, 8%. Z statistic here, lower critical value using norm S inf, but dividing alpha by two, upper critical value, and p-value using norm as dist, okay? And uh, multiplying it by two, of course, since this is two-tail, and clearly we reject the null hypothesis. And if we do a lower tail version of this test, we would still get a reject, but let's try that anyhow. So let's use now the lower tail version, same significance, but the lower tail and upper tail will get not reject. So we can do it maybe afterwards. So let's do that. Now we still have a reject, lower p-value because it's not multiplied by two. The critical value in absolute value terms has, has become smaller, okay, minus 1.65. And everything else, of course, doesn't change. So the only place that changes when we change two tail to lower tail is this part, okay? So still we get a reject conclusion, and even with a lower p-value. Now, if we do this one more time, okay, with the... Now this time the upper tail test, which is alternative hypothesis response rate is greater than 008. Now this will be clearly a not reject. Now, everything else is the same, obviously. Critical value is the plus critical value. Now it uses one minus alpha, not one minus alpha over two. The P value uses norm dot s dot this. Okay, but this time it's one minus because we want to find the area to the right that defines more extreme. And obviously it's a very high p-value, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. So the two other tests reject and reject consistently with the other test we have uh, do not reject. So that's also for, for the uh, pH stat with the z-test for the proportion. So 